greetings and welcome to Outlaws to the End. This is the official podcast of the Outlaw Gamers Society, bringing you our wrap-up for E3 2017. I'm Brent Adams, joined by that legendary scallywag that is Mr. Lauren Baumgarten. Lauren, what's going on? How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm pretty good. I'm mediocre. If, if, You're I, medi- if my mood is to be judged... By the excellence of this year's E3, than I'm mediocre. <laughs> uh, that is a true story. If you, I hope that you are not personally mediocre. No, I am personally fabulous. I mean, I know you're you are an, you are excellent, but I mean, I hope you're not feeling mediocre. Not in the least. However, uh, I would agree with you. So, um, well, let's, we're going to jump right into it. Obviously, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to talk to you about E3. We decided, yeah, uh, to do a single show and do it on. This is being recorded. Um, if you guys listen to NPR, we'll put our little. Dis- disclaimer here that this podcast has been recorded on Tuesday evening around 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time, so things may change after you, uh, when you hear this. But um, Nothing's going to uh, save it, though. I mean, things could change, but nothing's going to save it. <laughs> um, so we, we decided to watch, you know, E3 started on Saturday this year. Yeah. Uh, there was a press conference from the Electronic Arts Company uh, on Saturday. <laughs> if you can call that a press conference. And then uh, Bethesda, Ubisoft, uh, Microsoft, Xbox, and finally today on Tuesday, Nintendo. Um, which I don't, Brent. Are you? Will you be? Will you be talking about any Nintendo stuff today? Because be I, I won't. I'll be talking about Nintendo stuff, but I just barely got a second to watch like the first two trailers from Nintendo's uh, direct thing today. I just that's I just haven't had time today to catch up. Yeah, on right. That. So one of the challenges is that these. Yeah. Press conferences, um, obviously, one of them, start, the Sony one started last night at 9 o'clock, and we'll talk about that, 9 o'clock Eastern. Yeah. Um, I was watching. Brent, were you participating? There was some very uh, robust chat going on on the Discord server. Oh, yeah, man. The Discord server was the place to be this year. Uh, yeah. A lot of us were hanging out in chat. We set up a special uh, E3 chat room, and we were watching the live streams and uh, and sharing our thoughts, and, and that that was cool. It was an eye-opening experience. A lot of people expressed the wrong opinion about certain things. But, <laughs> were um, you, Brent? Were you? <laughs> were you? Uh, were you participating in voice chat? Um, no, no. I was in. I was in a channel with. Uh, I was in a channel with uh, Neil and Fett and Lance because we were in and around that. You know, we were kind of trying to like play games and organize some stuff. So gotcha. I was okay, because I, I was them. I was participating in in text chat uh, for the E three, and it, it didn't even occur to me that there there might have. In voice chat going on, yeah. but um, so I did. I did uh, get to jump in a little bit. Of the text chat it was awesome. So it was uh, a for those time. of you out there that didn't participate. Uh, please know next year or any other big events like this, you know, definitely or or just in general, yeah. don't forget about the OGS uh, Discord chat server. It's a great place to hang out and play games with each other. It is um, awesome. That so that was awesome, Brent. But I would what agree with you awesome. if we if we start by talking about the overall sort of yes our feelings about E three this year. Um, Medioka. I, I, I'm guessing that uh, you're feeling the same way I'm feeling, which is exactly what you just said, which is mediocre. Which is, I feel like what we saw uh, on the website as well was the overall yeah. impressions of, of E3 this year. I, well, here's I here's the the Twitter sized wrap up for me. The problem with this year's E3 is that everything I was excited about, I already knew about. Yep, I, I would I would agree with that. Uh, there were very few. Uh, reveal so reveals of new game new titles that yeah. were really exciting uh, with a couple exceptions there, we'll there talk were a few about that. there were a few yep but we'll talk about that i'll yeah. tell you brent one of the big problems i had and it's interesting because i don't know that i've experienced it to this degree before is that i feel like we at least for me anyway and maybe other folks reached this point uh, a long long time ago and i'm just really slow which is very possible um i feel like we've reached a point now in gaming where i um not only question release dates, but I outright don't believe them. Yeah. And so I feel like the majority of what we saw, I mean, I overwhelming 70%, I would say, or something like that, of games that were shown or talked about were release dates of 2018. Yeah. And, and I don't Which believe them. Which could mean 2019. Well, I, just, I simply don't yeah. believe them. So anything that said early 2018, I instantly converted to probably end of summer 2018. And anything that said... That didn't specify early 2018 and just said 2018, which I interpret as being at least mid-year, if not usually a fall release. Yeah, I'm presuming won't be released until the beginning of January. And I'm not being glib or sarcastic, but I literally was doing that conversion in my head. 
And so many, many, many of the games, I was like, this, so this is at least a year away, yeah. and many of these are 18 months away, so I don't really care right now. Right, right. I think, uh, I think you're not alone in that boat, and you're not wrong to feel that way. Uh, the game industry has trained us to be that way, so it's their fault, not ours. But I feel like it's a little... I, would you agree, Brent, that it's a little bit different than it has been in the past? I mean, in the past, I feel like, like, yeah, we all know that things slip or whatever. I felt, for me this year anyway... It just felt different. I was literally doing that conversion, and it, so many of the games felt so far away to me. No, my will to hope has not been broken yet, but uh, I'll okay. let you know when okay. I get there. All right. Um, we put out a poll on the Outlaw Gamers website this morning, so it's not been out very long. <laughs> There's, and we didn't give it much time. There's been, I think, six respondents. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not that low, but uh, we asked you guys which press event left you. The most excited, and I'm going to go to Lauren right now for those results. We actually have a three-way tie for second to last place, which I don't know that we've ever seen that before. <laughs> so this, this, I think somebody posted like, "What world are we in when, when, when this company's press conference is the number one press conference?" Yeah. At E3, but uh, and I believe your response was, "We're in Trump's America, son." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so to read off the poll results for you, Brent, which is my honor to do after so much time, uh, coming in in very dead last place with quite literally zero percent of the votes is EA's press conference, and deservedly um, so. I'm not sure about that actually, but we'll talk about that. Uh, coming in in a tie, a three-way tie for second to last place with five percent of the vote each. Microsoft, Bethesda, and the PC Gaming Show. <laughs> Coming in, in, in... No, in hindsight, EA and the, PC, and the PC Gaming Show should have been tied for last place. That's not... I mean, there's yeah. actually... There were actually... There's, there were a, at least a game that I'm excited about, uh, if not a couple, in the EA show. Okay, but, so how, how does, the, how does the, the, the last three... How does the, the top three round out for us? So coming in in third place, or third to last place, depending on how you look at it, uh, Nintendo with 14%. Um, Coming in in second place was the Sony Presser with 29%, and coming in in first place with an overwhelming 43% of the vote, Brent, is the Ubisoft uh, Presser. Welcome to my nightmare, where you're, where you're a gamer <laughs> who watches the Ubisoft press conference and is just like, oh god, they got my money on that too. Damn it. Damn it. Like, hide my wallet. No Ubisoft. I, Damn you. I know, dude. Man, I still begrudgingly, we'll talk about this, uh. but I still begrudgingly feel like... Man, Ubisoft is, is just making games I want to play, but they're a hard like, company sort of, to be a fan sort of, of. Though just barely want to play, but then I play them and I'm totally addicted to yeah, them. And, yeah, that's me. I, I'm right yeah. there, man. I mean, Ubisoft's yeah. got me. I don't know how they got me, but they got me. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's uh, jump into this fucking cesspool. Let's do it. Um, we're gonna go chronological. <laughs> there are, there's order. actually bright spots in this pool. No, it's seriously. There's some. That way. There's some great stuff. I mean, there's some really exciting stuff to talk about. It just doesn't. Feel it's just that not way. right now because right now we're talking about the EA press conference. I will that's tell not, you that there are not true. there are three games on this list, and as far as I'm concerned, there only needs to be one. So you tell me what the fuck Need for Speed Payback is doing here. So I will tell you because I'm actually interested in this game. And I know I posted, that you like Need for Speed, so yeah. Well, I, well, so if you're looking at this, are you, are, are you asking that question because you look at it through a Forza lens, and these no, games are no. a, a joke to you? Okay. No, I, I mean so, the games are a joke, but it's got nothing to do with Forza. Uh, so I actually, I, I actually kind of like need for speed and and I'm not that I'm do. I played a lot of these games or anything but but I I'm interested in this need for speed. I'm interested in the premise. I, I like what I've seen so far. The game looks fucking gorgeous obviously as True. all of these types of racing games do. I mean it's unbelievably beautiful but you know it's essentially the game is essentially and I'm not a Fast and Furious fan at all. I don't watch that series but people are calling it Need for Speed Fast and Furious or whatever. That's exactly I, what it I, looks like. I'm interested in the in the the premise. So the last Need for Speed was the one with the live action character with the live action bits in it yeah uh and that was that that was weird and not particularly interesting to me um although better than i thought it would be when i started playing it but not interesting um th this looks like an interesting premise to me and i actually posted on um at some point i finally posted on the activity feed on the site uh that's outlawgamers.com by the way in case you're not uh <laughs> <laughs> in case you're uh, I, po I, I posted on the site in the activity feed and i said am i like the only one who I felt like people were bashing Need for Speed, and I, I was actually interested in it. Yeah. I thought, so I asked if I was the only one, and several people wrote back and said, no, 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 this looks like a really interesting game. And so I actually think this looks like a really good game. And it is, to be honest with you, Brent, and I, I know this might stick in your craw, but uh, it's high on my list of the games out of E3 that I'm most interested in. Okay, well, I'm yeah. not going to go as far as to say that. I will say that 
I thought it looked interesting as well. I thought that what they're attempted to do with the story mode could be um, it could be a good idea. I agree that it looks a lot like Fast and Furious. Uh, I don't know what kind of a world we live in where a movie franchise that seems like it was ripped off from Need for Speed gets into a situation where they have cars running away from a submarine prior to a video game doing that. But uh, I, I <laughs> Need for Speed's catching up, I think. And honestly, this is one of those that, like, if you came to me and you told me, dude, I know that it's not, you know, like Gran Turismo or like, you know, some fucking racing simulator, but I think you ought to check this out. If you told me that, I would probably red box this thing and, and give it a shot because I, I did think that it looked kind of, uh, kind of interesting. So, so here's the other thing I'll say other, about it, Brent. Okay. It, is it, it, it might also possibly be a little higher on the list for me because it's got a fixed, uh, uh, what I believe is going to be a fixed, and I do think this one will release when they say it, release date that's in a, like the, the attainable future. Right. It's possible. So, okay. It just might be more real. Um, something that EA is, I think, hoping is going to really carry them through the bottom half of this year is uh, Battlefront 2. Obviously, a lot of anticipation around the first Battlefront. Pretty cool demo that was put out, and then the game came out, and everybody was like, hey, dude, where's my content? And yeah, right. um, yeah. hopefully not going to repeat that And mistake. then they sold it to you afterwards. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And then um, hopefully Battlefront 2 not going to make that uh, mistake. They showed off a big uh, multiplayer match. Basically, like, the last 30 minutes of the press conference was basically Battlefront 2, so... They're really, really putting uh, all their chips on this number, as it were. I desperately want to like Battlefield. I desperately want Battlefield to Battle kick front, ass. Excuse Battlefront. me, yes, Battlefront. Yeah, fuck yeah. Battlefield. I mean, not fuck it, but, you know. Oh, we got to talk about that too, actually. Fuck it. Um, Battlefront, I want to love. I want to love Battlefront. I want Battlefront to be good. But I tell you, they have got a real... They got a real uphill struggle with me. I, I really want to convince the other guys, Neil and Fett and Lance. I want to convince them that, man, we should get Battlefront and play the bejesus out of it. I bet it'd be a lot of fun. But I just am not confident enough to go there yet. So I have to say that what they showed off looked, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I'm so biased at this point. If it had been anything but Naboo, you know, like a setting from fucking episode one, um, Maybe I could have gotten more excited about it, but just being like reminded of the Phantom Menace just pissed me off and made me uninterested. So it that 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 could be just me though. That might not be their fault exactly. So I don't know. I hope Battlefront Two is better than I'm afraid it's going to be. I guess. Yeah. So I have this one's an interesting one for me because so I really enjoy Battlefront uh, One, but uh, also like got bored of it at some point and. Um, I am. There definitely looks like they're not making the mistake of content that they made in the first one. Mm. It definitely feels like they heard, um, which I give them credit for. It feels like they heard the. Uh, is it EA that does Game Changers? I think it is. Right. I have no clue. Um, I think EA does Game Changers. Ubisoft has their own version of it. But they, it sounds like they listen to the feedback and they have you know content from all across all of the universes and they have a single player campaign and they have space battles and so I think that's great. Uh, they also made the the fighting less floaty. Um, my guess is I'm going to end up buying this just because uh, I, I I will probably end up buying it. It looks like an improvement on the first one in nearly every way. The challenge for me is um, I, I not only am I not interested in content from the expanded universe of Star Wars, particularly episodes one, two, and three, actually. Um, not only am I not interested in that content, I actually disdain that content in the Star Wars universe. I really strongly dislike those movies, and so I have no interest Deservedly in being in those so. well, in those. Uh, yeah, but especially since like we now live in a world where we've got you know the Force Awakens and Rogue One and like good Star Wars movies. Right, those worlds the I would three. love to. I, I'm excited to play it. And yeah. Ky, the idea of having Kylo and the fact and, that they um, went back to the Phantom Menace is just I, I, like I can't understand the reasoning. Right. So super. I, I just like am actively. I just get annoyed at that those even exist. Yeah. And so that's off putting to me. Now that being said, when they fired up the demo, I thought, holy shit, this looks this map. Looks so good. It and, does. I mean, it it and, almost looks as good as the fucking movie did. Like it just looks so good. And I thought, you know what? I don't even care if this is Naboo or wherever the fuck it was. Yeah. In, in one of those worlds, I would want to play this map because it looks so goddamn good. And then what happened was watching them play it, and they were showing off a new game mode. I got bored pretty quickly um, mm. w with the way that was working. Now I don't know if that's just because 
I, I Alex Golden Boy Fucknuts who does the who does the commentating is like the worst commentator on the planet. But um, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I want to see more content. I'm excited about Kylo Ren. I'm excited about Ray. I'm excited about the characters from The Force Awakens. What I really hope happens is so fine, cool. Other people want content from across the the universe of Star Wars. I'm cool with that. I really hope they don't skimp out on the episode four, five, and six content because they had to expand it. Like, I hope there's a good Hoth, good Death Star, good. Um, I, did they ever do Cloud City in in uh, Battlefront One? I can't remember. I didn't own they, it. So I think they did. No Bespin. Clue. I think they did. Um, I hope those worlds are still uh, fully realized. And so I look forward. I actually I look forward to seeing more. And I'm guessing I'll probably end up buying it. Uh, at this point, uh, we're halfway through the EA press conference. I think we should just take a second. To say EA made some interesting choices uh, in their presentation this year by uh, bringing a couple people on stage with no prior public speaking experience and then asking them to introduce things. Uh, my favorite was a YouTuber that apparently no one's heard of that looks as though he was an extra, a background uh-huh. artist on an episode of Miami Vice and then cryogenically frozen and woken up four minutes <laughs> before being put uh, into the EA press conference. Is that, is that the dude's teleprompter who got screwed up? Uh, I, I don't think that's the only thing that was screwed up with him, but yes, probably. Uh, what was his name? Uh, I, I don't really know or care, yeah. but uh. anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so EA, EA made some interesting... They, they had some teleprompter trouble, I guess, but uh, also just I just wanted to congratulate them for, uh, for ruining their fucking press conference with amateurs. Um, <laughs> moving on. Yes, a way out. Uh, Is this a Kevin Costner movie from the nineties? This uh, it might it might as well be. Uh, this looks like it could have been like a cool like I'm trying to think like it, it should well and you know what it should have been it should have been Kevin Costner and Don Johnson starring in this uh, escape prison movie called A Way Out. A Way Out is the follow up to Brothers of oh, Tale of yes. Two Sons from Hazelight yes. Studios, yep. uh, directed by Joseph. Is it Ferris? I don't know. I think so, yeah. I'm not sure how his last name is pronounced. But anyway, so uh, similar to Brothers of Tale of Two Sons, it's about uh, these two characters. It's a prison escape uh, game, and it is designed for co-op. You must have. Requires, yep. Two players in order to play this, and you can play couch co-op or begrudgingly. They let you play online, uh, which I do appreciate, uh, given the fact that uh, I have reached the age where I don't live in the same city as most of my friends. So that was, uh, that was very nice of them. I appreciate their charity. Um, despite my, uh, sardonic tone, I, this is the one game from the EA press conference that I wanted on this list. Uh, I really, I like the tone of it. I think the story has some interesting possibilities, but especially the, the gameplay, the puzzle solving, and just the the way that they're going to utilize these two players in order to to accomplish things, Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons was brilliant at that. One of the most brilliantly designed games in that regard I've ever played, and I'm frothing at the mouth for any kind of follow up that is is playing in those waters. I do think it's interesting, and I'm certainly applaud, and I'm excited about um, the the attempt to do something like this. I think it's going to be an interesting experiment in the gaming industry to put out a game that is, that requires co-op. Um, obviously, um, I don't know. Did you catch Brent on the, on the online version of the co-op in this game? Is it, can I choose to play online co-op with you or do I have to, is there a server browser? Is there a, um, uh, a party system or is it, is it just random? I, I don't know the answer to that, but I would be shocked if there's not some way to, Play with friends as opposed to just random strangers. Uh, I would think so. It is definitely an interesting concept. Um, this is one I'm, I'm uh, intrigued by. I don't love the idea. Like I try and play with my friends uh, often, and, and it's very hard to do it with any regularity. Um, That's not and, the only and I, thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, 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 um, I, I, I am concerned about having a game that requires co-op because I'm definitely not interested in playing it with people I don't know. I agree. Um, and I feel like this game is something you're going to want to play with one person. Yep. Not not like I go play with you and then you're not available for a week and so I just play with Aaron oh, no, for example. Yeah, I agree. Like like you want to go through the whole game with the same team. Right. And so I feel like it, you know, it's very frustrating when I at least the way I experience gaming, I, it's not on the reg and so it's very frustrating when I can't play. So I think that will be challenging, but I'm looking forward to seeing more of the game mm. uh, and more more details about um sort of some of the technical aspects of it. Okay. 
So yep. let's uh, finish up real fast since we got a lot more to get through. Uh, with Battlefield One in the name of the Czar, this is the uh, the DLC for Battlefield One. Yes. Yeah, it is, and, and I just wanted to throw this on here because um, I I just thought that it looked really really good, and I haven't played a lot of BF One um, of late. I you know compared to the to BF Four and BF Three that I played hundreds of hours, and I think I maybe have put thirty into Battlefield One, and and um, but this DLC was looked really really tasty to me. Had some really kind of looked what looked like old school maps, snowy maps. Um, but but they look just updated and incredibly gorgeous, and uh, this could be the thing that gets me back into Battlefield One. It doesn't come out till September, I believe, but I just thought I'd throw that out there because I thought it looked really really good. All right, cool. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let's move on to the uh, to the Xbox uh, showcase, which obviously you know the big news this year is uh, Project Scorpio. You know they've officially announced it as the Xbox One X, a five hundred dollar powerhouse console that's going to do 4k hdr gaming 4k blu-ray playback and a whole lot more and uh, they were very very excited to show that off and talk about all the ways that that's going to enhance existing games and make uh, future titles look even better Uh, i basically have nothing to say about that because um i own a pc and uh (laughs) since i got a pc microsoft has just not been able to sell me an xbox back when i had an xbox and no pc i love my xbox uh, but now that I got the rig, I just, I cannot find any way or reason to own an Xbox. Uh, so if you're excited for uh, the Xbox one X, talk about that a little bit and, uh, yeah. and, and what it means to you as a gamer. Yeah. So I would let there's, I do have two things to say about this Brent. Number one is that I do think it's interesting for years. We sort of clamored and talked about how, like, you know, why can't, why are we not thinking of windows and Xbox as an ecosystem for gaming as a one, as one. Yeah. Um, and Microsoft has started to do that, which I think is fantastic, but it has created this interesting thing where I, I there, others, as far as I know, uh, there's no such thing as an Xbox exclusive anymore. Um, uh, or there, it doesn't yeah. feel like there are it's going to be moving exclusive forward to Xbox and windows 10, as they said, right. Which, which is great times. for me as a, as a player. Cause I can yeah. have a PC and a, and a PlayStation. But it has it has in a way undercut my desire to buy their console. Yeah, it, um, it's so, completely eliminated it for me. Although yeah. I am supporting their ecosystem by playing on Windows 10, and certainly there's a few exclusives that we're going to talk about that yep. I'm very very excited to play. But I'm just yep. not sure that where that leaves Xbox. I, I think yeah, this is, is what I said. Like if you already own a PC, I don't think there's any way that you can. I don't think there's any way that you can spend the five hundred dollars on the Xbox One X. And be as happy as you would be if you spent five hundred bucks on a graphics card upgrade for your PC, right? So uh, unless you are just if you're just one of those gamers who's completely not interested in owning a PC, then you know the Xbox One X may be really really compelling. Well, at some point, ostensibly the One X will drop to you know three hundred dollars or something, and then you know that that sort of dynamic changes. But I agree. Also, do yourself a favor and get a, a SSD for your games. Oh um, God, yes. Okay, so let's talk uh, about the wait, games. Wait, but I do want to say one oh. other thing, real quick, just quickly, Brent about the console, and that is it was really interesting because I, it was apparent that both Sony and Microsoft were interested in focusing on the games again this year. Yeah. And it felt to me like, uh, and I think it's a lesson that they learned that, that they learned from two years ago at the 2015 when, uh, or maybe it was 2014 when, when Sony went hardcore on games and Microsoft went hardcore on an environment. Yeah. And it bit Microsoft in the ass. And so th- I feel like that lesson has long stuck with them at this point. And so they, I felt like they wanted to focus on games but they knew they needed to talk about the console. And so yeah. it kind of had this feeling of like, all right, we're going to talk about the console, but really we were excited about the games for you. We're all about the games for you, but here's the console information. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Other than the part where they, uh, they had the new Porsche, but uh, yes, I agree with you. That was, that was kind of funny. Uh, it, it was a little bit funny. Uh, World premiere. Yeah. Um, games. Games, Lauren. So let's talk about Metro Exodus. As oh, soon as I realized that this was a Metro game, you're the first name that popped into my mind. Uh, I don't have anything to say about it other than it, it looked great. It was a good-looking demo, and I imagine that you're going to play the bejesus out of it. I'm sure that I will. It was, I mean, uh, it was a sexy demo. I mean, you have to admit, it looked, it looked good. It looked good. I agree. Uh, yeah, so I will. I mean, there's, you know. Air I, fight. We, I, ah. I, I want to know more about it, obviously, but the Metro games. Have you you played through the Metro games? I've not played through the Metro. I have not. No. Oh man, Brent, you need to pick up those. You, I, I really think you would like them. Um, and they're probably you can get them probably for dirt cheap right now. You know, now on like Green Man Gaming, whatever, like eight nine bucks, and I really think you would you would like them. But um, yeah, super excited about Metro Exodus. This 
is uh, certainly on the top of my list of my you know favorite games of of the show, and I'm super excited to see more. Yep. Uh, I I got nothing else to add uh, to that since you you will when you finally pick up these games and just and decide to suck it up and play one. All right. Let's talk about yeah. something that we both uh, have some interest in, and that is Middle Earth: Shadow of War, the follow up. To Shadow of Mordor, I'm planning a tattoo at the moment that says, In Bruise We Trust. Bruise being the gigantic <laughs> orc uh, that is. <laughs> that guy was, was that guy not fucking, fucking fantastic? Hysterical. Like, it's rare. It's rare that a, that video game dialogue can make me laugh. And Bruise has just got, he's got so many great lines and stuff. He's a really cool character. And I think it was a great idea to show him off in the uh, the demo. Oh, it was brilliant. It was a brilliant demo. The, the, the moment that I was especially fond of is when. Uh, Tarion and I can't, I can't remember the the uh, the elf lord that Tarion is you know is uh, co opted by, but uh, where they take over Bruce and you know he says you now serve the bright lord and Bruce stands there a second he goes eh, <laughs> dark lord bright lord no difference really um, yep. very it's brilliant very Dude, very I think fun it, I think it was such a great decision on their part to highlight in their demo the 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 dialogue the characterization the the writing in the game mm-hmm. instead of just focusing on mechanics which there are uh, a ton, a ton of, of new mechanics deep and new mechanics in this game yeah and uh, I think it was so smart of them to focus on that comedy first of all comedy in games is super powerful I will always remember No One Lives Forever I'm playing Borderlands right now I got the yeah. sequel yeah. um, and being back in that universe and the the comedy that's in games is it's just it makes them stand out I just I thought it was fucking brilliant and I I don't I think there's any question that I'll be buying this game. No, I, I mean... There's no question. No, th- there's absolutely no question. I'm, I'm ex- yeah. so excited to play it and, uh, and experience it, so there's nothing else that needs to be said. Um, one thing that I did not expect to walk away from thinking, huh, I really need to get this, is the fucking Minecraft uh, update, whatever they call it, like the Super Duper Graphics update, whatever it was. But Microsoft showed up, uh, you know, they showed up this Minecraft thing, and all of a sudden I looked at that and I said, you know what? Like I like I've tinkered with Minecraft. I've never really like gotten into it though. I should get into Minecraft. I, I was thinking about this both for myself uh, as a gamer and as a dad, because obviously Minecraft is something that uh, that kids uh, can get into and have a lot of fun with. And I was I was definitely looking at that and thinking, you know, Z and I could you know we could build a you know huge fortress and trampolines or you know whatever and so all of a sudden i kind of got interested in minecraft as a result of this graphics update which hey it does look uh, very good or as good as uh you know a blocky minecraft kind of game can be but anyway yeah it's it, that's a game i still don't really understand um i'll i'll see if i can talk I, you into it assuming i ever get into it i i certainly don't understand the concept of graphically updating a game that is specifically designed to be an 8-bit type game, but, right? But uh, but whatever, that's fine. Uh, you know, the last night would disagree with you on that point because the last the last night is nothing if not a classic retro sort of pixel art game that is contrasted with stunning modern visuals uh, in terms of its you know its environment and uh, you know like the compositing, the lighting effects and stuff. It's a really really interesting. Sure, Fez is similar. It just contrast. I, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Uh, Not my cup of tea. Speaking of cups, Brent. Uh, you don't want to talk about the last night? Uh, oh, the last night. What, I'm sorry. What, that, what did that, I just that, say? The, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't. I did not. <laughs> I didn't realize the last night was one of the revealed games. I apologize. Uh, it was. That was showed off. Uh, that was shown off uh, during. I guess it was kind of that part of the Xbox um, presser where they were you know, showing like indie titles and stuff like that. Uh, there were a few in there that caught my eye, but I, I think the last night caught a lot of people's eye. A really, really striking looking game, very cool kind of uh, you know noir Blade Runner sort of uh, sort of look. Uh, I very, very excited. This is also one of the few things that they showed at the uh, at the PC Gamer Show that uh, got me excited as well. Uh, so somehow I just pulled that up real quick, Brent, and somehow I don't know how I must I'm. Must have stepped out of the room because I did not see this at the press. You did not see so. the last night there. Okay. Well, anyway, you nope. go ahead and watch it. Uh, yeah, I will. It's it's tremendous. So while you're watching that, let's also talk about another game that is tremendous in its visual appeal, and that is Cuphead, which you mentioned. Uh, this we we saw this uh, we saw a little bit of this. I can't remember if it was last year, 
But um, yeah. So the, we've just got it like a bigger reveal, and man, I mean, it's a, it's crazy. It looks like 1930s color animation, uh, complete with all of the sort of the 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 distortion and the the kind of film grain and just all of these artifacts that you'd expect to see in really really old color animation. Uh, the art style is right out of that that era as well. I have no idea what the gameplay is going to be like, but man, it is a thing of beauty to behold. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's super, super, like interesting to look at conceptually. And this is just one of those games that I still don't. Uh, we we didn't get a release date for it, right? I mean, that was a, or, or did we? I, can't I don't remember. know. I'll, I'll look real fast. Yeah, um, it, it's one of those uh, games that I just I feel like I need to see more. I'm super intrigued by it. I love. I absolutely love, like you said, the aesthetic of it yeah. and uh, and all that. But I still don't quite like understand how it's going to play and how I'm going to play it. Like release date um, is listed on Wikipedia, September 29th, 2017. Yeah. Okay. So I look forward to, I look forward to seeing more about that. What do you think about the last night now that you've had a chance to watch it a little bit? I think it looks interesting. Also, you know what I was looking for was, uh, was a release date for last night and I'm not seeing one, um, uh, which is unfortunate because I would like to, I would like to see one. Yeah. But, uh, I'll look that up real fast. Let's see. But here. I do think that looks really interesting. I mean, you know, I, I couldn't, I, I'm certainly my most anticipated movie of this year is is Blade Runner 2049, and yeah. I love that world. And short of Cyberpunk 2077, um, uh, this is the closest thing to it that I can see right now. So it's interesting. Last night is just listed as 2018. So yeah, anybody's so guess 20, right? 2019. Okay. Cool looking game though. All right, so yep. the game that EA should have shown off in its own press conference for whatever reason decided it'd be a great idea. To let Microsoft steal the thunder is Anthem, a new title. From, I'm going in with money. A new title from Bioware. Uh, I tell you, this I've talked to a lot of people who suddenly have Anthem on their radar. I've heard comments from uh, it looks uh, it looks like Bioware's version of Star Wars to this is what Destiny should have been. Uh, so I I don't know. I I thought it looked really interesting, striking gameplay seemed like it could be fun. What did you think, Lauren? Did Anthem catch your eye at all? A hundred percent. It absolutely caught my eye. Um, I, I, it's so. So I didn't even know that it was out there. I didn't know like what. Uh, I, I mean, we. I think we knew Bioware was working on something. We didn't know what they were working on. Right. Um, this absolutely caught my eye, and I, you know, again, this is one of those games that uh, I can't remember what the what the release date was. If it was one of the ones that said early. Uh, 2018, or if it just said coming 2018, yeah. Uh, and so it was one of those games that I was like, "This looks really interesting," but no reason to get excited yet, right? Yeah. So I mean, I you know, obviously we need to some more see more information. The exosuit we saw, I think, six minutes of gameplay of them with the exosuits, right? Um, which I think is uh really really interesting. So this, uh, I can't remember was this this was the I feel like this might have been the trailer where I had the sense that they paid the same dialogue. Uh, folks that did the division yes, trailers. Yes, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it's that it's that whole sort of written as as if it's as if it's just off the cuff gamers talking. You know, like oh, I'm going to go here. Oh, hold on, let me get my coffee. And you know, like like all those kinds of quips where like they're trying to make it sound legit. I'm like, why yeah, don't you just let just people play so it fake. and just record right. what they say to each other? It's yeah. so terrible. It's so terrible. It's worse than it's worse than reality. It's worse than scripted reality TV. Yeah, so I, I, it's super off-putting, and so oh, I'd really like to yeah. see some just real gameplay uh, with real people playing this. But I the agree. game looks freaking gorgeous. It look, I mean, it looks like it has. I agree. A t- uh, it, it, to be honest with you, it looks like it has so much potential that I um, that I, I, I'm questioning, <laughs> like, you know, can, can it really be that good? Can Bioware recover from the misstep that was Mass Effect Three and? Well, it's just such a different direction. Yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for it. I, I like the I like the co-op ability. I'm all about the co-op ability. So being able to play with friends and and all that uh, seems like a great idea. We'll get excited when we hear more and get closer to a release date. State of yeah. Decay Two. Speaking of co-op, this one's high on my list because I I, I do like the co-op games. Now that I've got uh, some people to play co-op games with. This is coming from Undead Labs, uh, published by Microsoft. Of course, obviously, it's the sequel to the 2013 State of Decay. We saw a trailer for it. No real gameplay, but certainly within the trailer, we get a sense of, I think, what made State of Decay so interesting, and that is just the ability to 
you know, kind of create your own little zombie apocalypse fortification. Uh, you're, you know, gathering supplies, you're upgrading, you're, you're trying to be self-sufficient, you're trying to defend yourself from the zombie apocalypse. I love that idea. I, I love the, the, the way that uh, State of Decay did that, the, the whole thing of being able to essentially recruit people, I guess, into your, into your little uh, enclave and all that. I'm very interested in this one. Yeah, you know, State of Decay was a weird game for me because it, it's a really good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got it, and I played it for a little while, but very quickly I stopped playing it. I never went back to it, and I and I don't know why. It wasn't a specific. Uh, there's nothing about the game I didn't like, right. but um, it, it didn't. It also wasn't didn't inspire me, and so um, I I kind of feel that way about State of Decay too. Okay, I, I'm intrigued by it. I want to see more. I know it's a good franchise. Um, I'm a little uh, not a little. I am fatigued with um, zombie based games at this point. And we're going to talk about you ain't the only one. Yeah, we're going to talk about Days Gone, and there's some, there were some other games, but uh, yeah, this is a this is a remains to be seen, and didn't get me too excited personally. All right, did Sea of Thieves get you excited, matey? Arr. Not not even a little bit. Oh man, I love Sea of Thieves. I'm you dying gotta to be play kidding me. Game. I was watching this thing thinking, who the fuck wants to play oh, this I game? I really want to play it. I think it looks so fun. Again, see again, but it's all about it's all about that co op. It's all about that shared co op experience. And being able to just run around, wreak havoc. I mean, you know, like we do that in Ghost Recon now, but I think Sea of Thieves is a whole different kind of mayhem and havoc. And the idea of being able to, you know, go to islands and solve puzzles to loot treasure and uh, trying to go through the wreckage of sunken ships, avoiding sharks, and then, of course, the multiplayer and taking over other ships and everything. I am so down for this. I, I thought it looked really, really fun. And uh, I am trying to get into the closed beta so that I can check it out as soon as possible. Yeah, good. I'll be curious to hear about it from you. I, I, this, well, I'm like, not had, telling you li- now that I know that you're not I into literally it. was watching this going, who the fuck would play this? Go suck an egg. Um, <laughs> so I'm done with Microsoft. Anything, uh, we're all done with Microsoft, right? Nothing else there? Yeah, no, I don't. And just to be clear for everybody, we're not discussing every game that was discussed oh, no, no, in no, each no, one of these no. pressers. We just pulled out the ones that we thought were interesting and we want to talk about it. i mean the show will already go a, a little while just talking about these so if we missed a game you're interested in we apologize just we're not gonna be able to talk about every game right so bethesda uh of course you know last year i thought bethesda just knocked it out of the fucking park this year i thought bethesda did a really good job but there really wasn't anything there that i just found myself bowled over by it was all kind of by the numbers yeah that makes sense update to fallout shelter sure Fallout 4 VR, Skyrim VR, Doom VFR, sure. All that makes a lot of sense. But then, BJ Blaskowitz comes, (laughs) he comes out of the corner for a 12th round knockout with Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Holy fuck, does this look awesome. So, I I watched this video, I knew... So I didn't get to watch the Bethesda press conference uh, because of the time of it or whatever, and because I think it started at midnight Eastern time, didn't it, or something ridiculous? Yeah, it was it was um, late. So I never I didn't watch it, but I I knew that they had revealed Wolfenstein two, which which actually we kind of knew like a couple of days before, or whatever. And so I loved I loved the last Wolfenstein, yeah. um, and so uh, I was excited to watch it. I came home and I watched it, and I started watching the trailer, and I'm like, yeah, this makes some sense. This feels like the new Wolfenstein. And by the end of it, I, I the first thing I did was go to the website and type in, I just got Wolfenstein all over my face. More, please. <laughs> uh, and, and somebody from the community proceeded to type in, yeah, man, I Wolfensteined a couple times earlier today, and I had just calmed down, and then I saw your post again. Now I got to go change my pants again. Yeah. Or something like that. Um, so, dude... <laughs> I just, I, the last one was so fucking good, and this looks so fucking good. It, it does look really up good. With, with a scene in which a pregnant woman is stabbing the fuck out of a Nazi in the background while a uh, soldier <laughs> is dropping acid in the foreground <laughs> and seeing a cartoon character. The, I, I gotta say that, like, the end. Like I, I was watching it. I'm saying, like, he, did he just drop acid? Is he chasing a cartoon lizard while she's That's stabbing exactly. that guy to death? <laughs> and like, they, like right then and there, I'm like, come on! Like, it's just, it's bonkers. It's just so bananas. Uh, I love it. I love it. So, the release date on this one is October 27th, 
2017, coming to Xbox One, yeah. PlayStation 4, and PC. So there's two yeah. reasons to get excited about this game. Number one, because it's fucking awesome. And number two, it's coming out this year, in theory. Uh, yeah, man. It, it, it's, uh, oh, man. So so I think, I, I don't think I've announced it on the show yet. Mm. I don't think I did. But I told you, Brent, yeah. that uh, we're pregnant. Uh, my wife and I with our first. This is a hell of a time uh, to say it, but congratulations, Lauren! Yeah! Uh, <laughs> I'm excited for both of you guys. Congratulations, man. I'm excited, You're too. You're going to make and great our, parents. Uh, uh, our daughter uh, is is oh. slated to be born uh, uh, at this point. Uh, she is slated to be born on November 18th, and so I've started looking at things as pre-November 18th and post-November 18th. For good reason. For good reason. The amount of time that I will have to do things, and... Uh, what was it recently that I... Oh, Red Dead Redemption, which was previously slated to come out in the fall. Yeah, and that shit ain't And got man. pushed, was going to be my, like, this is the game I'm going to play while I'm on my few weeks paternity leave. Yes. When I do have time to play games. No. Or paternity leave, excuse me. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Right. Um, uh, and uh, I was very disappointed when Red Dead got postponed. And, and if I even make it that far without completing this game, uh, very likely Wolfenstein is high on the list of uh, this could be the game. So... Um, they did. I'm super fucking excited for this game, Brent. They did announce shortly afterwards a hundred dollar collector's edition. Yeah, uh, it comes with a BJ Blazkowicz um, doll. Basically, it's not a figurine; <laughs> it's like a doll. I, um, it's a posable is, action figure, Lauren. Come on, it, it, it literally says doll. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know that. Uh, I don't particularly ah. like the BJ Blazkowicz doll, so uh. I don't. I was all excited to see what the collector's edition would be. Um, and then you came to your senses. I actually might buy it, though. It's in a cool case. <laughs> Listen to uh, it. Uh, anyway, uh, so fucking excited for this game, Brent. I'm going to actually just talking about this makes me want to go rewatch that trailer right now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, which is probably what we'll do as soon as we're done here. Let's talk about yep. the PC Gamer Show. <laughs> Fuck the motherfucking PC Gamer Show. <laughs> Moving on to Ubisoft. <laughs> I didn't watch it. Was it was it as bad and stupid as it's been for the last three years? Yep. Yeah. I tell you the difference though. The difference though is that, is that this year they knew. I can't remember the, the the name of the guy that hosts it, but he was making all of these really interesting, sort of self effacing jokes and things throughout because he's making jokes and stuff. People in the audience aren't laughing, or he'll get like one person in the back going "woo." And he's like, oh, and that's the sound of my career dying. You know, just like those kinds of jokes and stuff. Right. It was awkward. Uh, they de- Similar to the VGAs, they really, really need to keep working on the format and find something that works. I mean, it took the VGAs God knows how long, but last year, the VGAs fucking worked. But like, they finally, they finally found the formula for the VGAs last year after God knows how many uh, and what, false 15 starts years? and attempts. So I really want the PC Gamer Show to be to be good. I want them to find the format that works. I want them to find the host that works because it may not be this guy. I really really want them to to make this happen. So I hope that they uh, I hope they keep trying and I hope that uh, they eventually do get the formula. But yeah, I think yeah. one of the, I mean so did they do that whole desk thing or couch thing no, or whatever actually, the, the interview it, formula? You know, they should have gone they what they should have done in my opinion is they should have done like a panel discussion kind of thing. Instead, what they did was they had two bar stools, basically, or, or bar height chairs. And so everybody like goes up there, and they stand in these bar height chairs. Everybody has terrible posture in bar height chairs. They, right. he, the dude makes a joke at one point about, you know, like slumping over, looking at each other talking. I mean, they might as well have gone back to the talk show, uh, like the late night talk show format, because it, it might have actually worked better than this. You know, one of the other things that I, I think – is a pro- has been a problem for them historically is I feel like in general they focus on the PC games that are only PC games so like the Starcrafts of the world yeah. like those kind of games and they don't talk about any of the other games and how they'll look on the PC and so for somebody like me who's a PC gamer but tends to play franchises that are available cross platform which I think a lot of people do the the division all the Tom Clancy games the battlefields the battlefronts the uh, you know, a lot of people play Call of Duty. They don't talk about any of those games generally, or they talk about them very, very little. Um, and they focus on the WoWs and Starcrafts of the world, and so it's it's uninteresting. I think the expanding the the dictionary of the things they're talking about and trying to get some reveals yep. in their press conference could be meaningful as well. But well, whatever, we can move. I think that I think that they are trying to do that. They opened really strong with uh, XCOM Two: War of the Chosen. 
being a huge XCOM fan, I'm totally, totally down for this. That was super exciting to see. But very quickly, it, it started to kind of falter for me. Uh, they talked about uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which is obviously a really, uh, that's a really popular thing right now. Killing Floor 2 got some love. Uh, I think that, you know, the, what was the one I'm trying to remember? There was one in the bottom half that I thought really, oh, uh, Lawbreakers, you know, like, like that's, that's probably one of the biggest things they talked about the, you know, the new, uh, Cliff Blazinski game talked about Lawbreakers quite a bit and, uh, showed off, showed off a lot from that. So, right. you know, there, I mean, there's moments that there's definitely moments in there that, that did shine it's just that the it's just so cringeworthy that it's 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 difficult to remember the bright spots for all of the awkwardness but right. I, I don't although i started the you know jokingly saying fuck this show I, I really don't mean that i really do want them to i want them to do good and to and to keep showing off some of the great games which they did show off some great games all right all right Ubisoft. Let's move on to the, Ubisoft. The winner. The winner <laughs> that's right, yes, of the Outlaw Gamer right. poll. Um, let's talk about the most important game they showed off. Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. <laughs> the the uh, turn-based why strategy is this on game there? that no one asked for, but you're getting anyway. Uh, I got about two minutes into this gameplay reveal before I mentally bought a Nintendo Switch. I will buy a Nintendo Switch now. I will play this game. I will love it. I love the Rabbids. I love turn-based strategy games. I think that my daughter will love this. I've already showed her the gameplay video like twice. She loves, you know, she point Mario. I'm like, that's right. That is Mario. I love Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I can't wait to play it. I am not even joking with you. I fucking wait. Is this a real? Is are we having a real conversation? I think right this now, game is you? fucking awesome. I'm, I'm looking at your face over Skype, Brent. I don't know if the listeners know that. I'm looking at your face over Skype, and I'm trying to determine if you're telling the truth. I am not even kidding. I cannot wait to play this. I am so ex- okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> so not only did are we in a world where Ubisoft won, but this is the most the most excitement I've heard from you to this point. About E3 is a Mario versus Rabbit. I think it's awesome. I think it is okay. fucking awesome. Uh, that's awesome, man. That's fantastic. I think it's, uh, you know, everybody needs a good mashup like um, Marvel versus Capcom. Maybe this is the new Marvel versus Capcom. It is for me. All right. Uh, what about what about Far Cry 5, Brent? What did you think about what they showed of Far Cry 5? I thought that I now know what the people of Bolivia must feel like. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, that's very, very interesting. <laughs> Because I'm watching this, I'm like, that, no, that's not how it, no, never mind, you know. Um, but no, I mean, obviously, they're they're creating a fictional world, and they've got to push things to extremes to make that happen. And if I'm enjoying a game where the, where the nation of Bolivia is a narco state, then, you know, I can deal with the game where... Um, America is accurately represented. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> Um, Brent lives in the south, by the way. I, I do. I, I live in the south. I live with the people that this game is den- uh, is denigrating. I mean, portraying. Sorry. Um, I don't give a shit about Far Cry. You know, I, I've tried to get into those games before. I love Blood Dragon. You know, but I don't know. Like I've just like you talk them up so much, and I always get excited, and then I I sit down at the point where I might actually buy one. I'm like, I don't really care. I don't know if Far Cry Five is going to change that. Honestly, if Far Cry Five was four player co op. I would probably get it because as much as I like four player co op Ubisoft games, they've is Far Cry only two player? Yeah, as far, well as far as I know, it's only two player co op. Um, but I, I have to say that in terms of so, in other words, this would be a single player game for me, basically. And in terms of the single player games that I am going to play in 2018, there's just there's just too much competition for things that I actually am already excited about and want to play as opposed to Far Cry Five. It would have to be it would it would have to be one of those things where everybody on earth is telling me, You would fucking love this game, you gotta play it, you know, and just hounding me to get me to take a look at it at this like point. Like Blood Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it would take that basically. What about you? Yeah, right. Uh yeah, I, I I'm I'm cool on this game. I'm not I'm not excited about this game necessarily. I, I like I really am intrigued by games set in the United States. Yeah. I, I would love to. Uh, I wish there were more games set in the United States. Look how badly we um, got burned on fucking uh, 
home home, home. Front, though. Yeah. But I love those games. I, I mean, I, I love games set in the United States. I wish they're like this. I wish there were more of them. Um, I I don't particularly like the um, the group of people that they have decided to um, represent. Like, I don't know that I want to play an entire game full, full of you know uh, Southern white supremacists or whatever. Right. That's not the kind I like. I that's not the kind of game in the U.S. I'm interested in playing. The subject matter doesn't interest me. Yeah. Um, so the story is not, and as a matter of fact, it's very, it's off putting to me because those cult, those particularly cults, um, is something that I just, uh, I have a disdain for, and I'm not interested in necessarily playing a game, um, that centers around that. I don't think like religious zealots. Um, and so the subject matter doesn't interest me. The gameplay looks like a, uh, continued evolution of the Far Cry franchise, which is great. But uh, right now, the game is not grabbing me. We'll see what 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 other media comes out uh, as we move forward. But it's it's not grabbing me in any particular way. Yeah. The game basically asks you to imagine a world where, like, the Westboro Baptist Church, like, takes over a small town, and there's just there's just not a lot of things that are more terrifying than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't I don't know, Brad. It's interesting, and and actually, it would be interesting to sort of explore. My, my feelings in relationship to it because it's different like if you show me a cult in sri lanka it, it seems fantastical enough that i don't associate it with reality yeah. but uh religious white zealots in the united states i think might hit a little too close to home i don't know right right i don't i don't know all right well uh what about beyond good and evil 2 ubisoft brought the house down yeah so with this can i interrupt you for a second here. brent because I, i'm hoping that you will be able to explain this to me yeah i did you play beyond good and evil I never finished it. I played it, but I never. I, like, but you played I it, so I mean, it. like, I don't even know what kind of game this is. And I will say that the trailer was fucking dope. Oh yeah. And I was watching this thing, and I was like, "This is cool," but I don't have any idea, like, what kind of game this is. Is it a is it a god game? Is it an MMO? Is it a shooter? Is it a like? I don't even understand what this game I is. This would be an adventure game. Um, you know, it, it's it's a it's a much beloved kind of cult favorite. Uh, you know, kind of title that uh, you know that that was really popular on the uh, the PlayStation Two, or, or I, I guess it was on other platforms too. PlayStation Two is where I I played it, but uh, you know, it's got this kind of cool cult following and everything, and it's been like fifteen years. Crap, when did when did it come out? Yeah, fourteen years ago. Uh, yeah, so almost uh almost That's fifteen years that yep. um that the original came out, and they've been I guess they've been trying to make a sequel for a really long time, and like we're finally. I guess we're finally inching forward, even though all we got was a CG trailer and no gameplay. So, hopefully, all of that enthusiasm and excitement uh, is not going to be squandered. It was a, all I can say. It was a fantastic trailer. It I was, never played the first Beyond Good and Evil, as I have no idea what it what it references or what kind of game it is. But it was a fantastic trailer, and I'm super interested uh, in seeing this game in 2019. Right. Well, fingers crossed that uh, it's going to be everything we hope that it can be. What else did Ubisoft show off? Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. I've heard of it. Yeah, I, I tell you, man, I see a lot of people. They're really, really excited about it, and I'm like, you know, I I have been down this road so many times. I look at an Assassin's Creed game and I say, that looks awesome. Maybe this will be the game that finally gets me into Assassin's Creed, and then I buy it and I play about ten hours of it, and I just die inside because I don't know why. Because I just I they look great. And I never have fun playing them, the Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, so it's funny because I kind of had this feeling of like, yeah, this this doesn't really interest me, but I'll probably end up buying it because I always do. Dude, I love the setting. I love right? the setting. It looks I great. Actually, I actually really like the setting as well. Um, w- w- but I'm not drawn to the game at all. Like Watching the gameplay of this, I was like, Eh, it's more of this, like I like I love the setting of Egypt, but it feels like just more of the same, and I uh, I don't know, but I always end up buying these goddamn games. Yeah, same so here. I, I don't know what to say. Like I don't want to dig myself into a hole that I'm not gonna be able to get out of. Well, I'll I'll watch some let's plays and maybe that'll satisfy me. Yep. Skull and Bones. You remember when speaking of Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed Black Flag came out and everyone was like, "Oh my god, the pirate mechanics are amazing." They should just make a fucking pirate game. Well, they did. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, Skull and Bones, I 
am really, really curious to know what the extent of the gameplay is because what they show off looks like ship to ship combat, and that's it. Multi multiplayer multiplayer ship to ship combat multiplayer ship to ship combat. But I gotta say that if the game is only the ship combat mechanic and that's it, I think they really, really missed the mark in terms of what this game could have been. I like the idea of a multiplayer pirate themed adventure game, but if the only thing that you can do with this game is shoot at other ships, I don't know. I don't know if it's that compelling. Well, and I, I really enjoyed the the game, the ship based gameplay in Assassin's Creed in Black Flag, as, as I think most people did. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed the combat. I, I don't know that I'm interested in that combat in a multiplayer scenario. Right. Like, I, I just watching it, I, I I mean, I understand what they're doing. Like, so first of all, I understand what they're why they made a game, and they should have. That was a smart thing to do, not to try and keep doing it in other Assassin's Creed games, but recognizing they had something special and trying to do something with it. I, I commend them for that. That's what they should have done. Um, I see what they're doing with the multiplayer, where they're trying to create like classes, kind of, and with the different ships and all that. But it, it just, it to me, it had this overwhelming feeling of like it doesn't feel like it quite fits. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm really interested in this game. I really loved and thought they did an amazing job with the detail and the shanties and uh, uh, and the ocean. And I just thought they did an amazing job with it in Black Flag. And I, I've really been wanting them to make a game with it. Um, I I don't I, I feel like they've missed the mark at this point until we see something else at least. All right. So one of the few titles that you can get excited about this year is South Park: The Fractured But Whole. Um, that is due to come out after what two delays now? Due to come out on October seventeenth, yeah, twenty seventeen. Yeah. Hopefully, they're going to make it. Uh, there's nothing. That, there's almost nothing they can do at this point to turn me off of this game. Stick of Truth remains one of the high water marks for both, like intellectual property tie-in games as well as role-playing games. Stick of Truth is fucking incredible. I am so excited about the expanded mechanics of Fractured But Whole and really, really anxious to check it out. However, I might have gotten even more excited about the fact that South Park showed off a customizable card game for mobile platforms. Going where CD Projekt Red has not yet dared to. They've got a customizable South Park card game called South Park Phone Destroyer that's coming out, I think, I want to say in August. Yeah, so I I, I saw this tra- again. I, I uh, this part of the Ubisoft conference, or I can't remember all of it. Whatever. Yeah. I saw afterwards, and I immediately went to the website and posted. Did, did or actually no, I was watching it live, and I posted on the website. Did Did Ubisoft just announce a Gwent game for the mobile platform? Yeah, they did. I mean, did South Park announce a Gwent game? And I'm like, I, they just fucking beat CD Projekt Red to. What CD Projekt Red should have been doing this entire time, which is a mobile version of Gwent. Yeah. Uh, and now, it, who knows what the mechanics are going to be like? Like, who knows how it's actually going to play and everything? Well, it looked like there was like, some aspect. Did you notice, Brent? It looked like there was some aspect of those cards actually caused the characters to fight on the screen or whatever, yeah. and they, they looked like they had a cooldown. I, I, I don't care. I mean, I'll take it. Like, whatever, yeah, whatever no, it yeah, is, absolutely. I will take it. Fucking mobile Gwent is 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 the game that's needed. That's the killer app. Not that there needs to be one. Yep. Uh, on a mobile platform for gaming, at least for me. And fucking, I love South Park. There's there's just no there's just no way this can go wrong at this point. <laughs> I don't know that I would go that far. Maybe, that. maybe Ex- except for the fact that on. you just said that. Let me back that up. Okay. Let me just. I'm really excited for Phone Destroyer. Uh, just to clarify. I guess it was a rumor that it was coming out in August. They officially have not announced anything. They've just said later this year. Uh, so, it, you know, maybe it'll be closer to the release of the game. I don't know. But anyway, the August thing, apparently that's just a rumor that I heard. Not official information, just for clarification. And is it coming to Android? I assume. Uh, let's see God if they say that. anything here. They don't say anything about it in this article I'm reading. I, I would be shocked if it doesn't come to, to both. Yeah, I'm sure. Android I'm sure it will. All right, so anyway, but yeah, South Park, uh, that was that was a real high watermark for the Ubisoft press conference for me. And that brings us at long last to Sony, who, as Lauren pointed out, closed out Monday evening uh, with just wall-to-wall 
game trailers. Uh, I, you know, the CEO came out twice to address the audience. I think he was on stage for a grand total of maybe four minutes during the entire press conference. Uh, I actually really liked the, the first thing he had to say was he came out and said words to the effect of, we're delighted that you're all here. Let's agree that we're all gamers and we're all brought together by our love of gaming. And now back to the games and, and then walked off stage and, and the game trailers resumed. I, I liked, I enjoyed their dedication to just showing off games. I thought their opening salvo was pretty strong. The first three things that they threw down were Uncharted, Lost Legacy, Horizon Zero Dawn. What's, I can't remember the name of the expansion, but, uh, but DLC for Horizon Zero Dawn. The winter, no, uh, the 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 wisp, or the the wind, or the uh, something like that. Okay, it was in a snowy area. Yes, th- thank you. That helps with the title a lot. And then about uh, seven or eight minutes of gameplay from Days Gone. Uh, so why don't we just start with those three, since that is a good place to start, Lauren? What did you think about uh, Uncharted: Lost Legacy? Uh, the Frozen Wilds is what it's called. Frozen Wilds. No. There you go. Yes, uh, that was the Horizon one, by the way. Uh, Uncharted 4, The Lost Legacy, which you pointed out to me earlier, is not, in fact, called Uncharted 4, The Lost Legacy, but just Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. Um, it, I, I, I'm wondering, and I asked you this, and we're not sure, I thought like Naughty Dog made a big, big deal about doing its first uh, story expansion or story DLC with Uncharted 4, and I think it turned into this separate standalone game, basically, uh-huh. which is $40, and so I'm super curious... Um, how well, like what the length of the game is, or or whatever. I mean, it's a it's a seems like an a, an interesting weird price point. Yeah, it's not quite DLC or an expansion. It feels like, but it's not quite a full game. And so, I'm interested in that. But I have to say, when they released the information uh, of the characters that this was going to center on, I was disappointed, uh, uh, to say the least. I, I really had hoped that they, I I really really appreciated the aspect of Uncharted Four in which they lo- showed Nathan and Sam as kids. Um, I thought that was very special, and it was a, a new innovation in the storytelling. I, mean, I know they showed Nathan in 3 as a kid, but this felt different. felt a lot more like a, a movie from my childhood type thing. And so I was hoping, and then the ending of, uh, spoiler alert for Uncharted 4, spoiler alert, if you haven't played the game, you want to shut this off for about one minute. Um, but the ending of Uncharted 4 in which they, that's right, spoiler alert, in which they um, reveal Nathan's daughter, Nathan and Elena's daughter, uh, I really hoped that was the direction they were taking the expansion, the story expansion. So when I found out the content of it, I was disappointed, and I haven't been that interested in it. Lately, uh, and with the the uh, footage that they showed at E3, I am uh, once again invigorated to uh, play this, and it looks fantastic and wonderful. I also, uh, and this, I don't know, Brent, you will totally understand this, but I, I do feel a tiny bit cheesy saying it. Um, now that I know that I'm having a daughter... I'm always on the lookout for interesting uh, female characters yep. in in media, yep. and I'm actually now really excited where I wasn't before about having a piece of Uncharted like this that features two female lead characters that my daughter might play one day. And mm-hmm. so um, I'm definitely very, very interested in this, and I'm sure I will be picking it up. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll find, I imagine, as I have, you'll find that you'll begin sort of collecting, uh, in air quotes, uh, collecting ideas and things that you say, ah, oh, you know, this would be a really great book series to get her. Oh, this would be a really good this to get her. You know, all that kind of thing. Uh, you know, comic series and movies and TV and right with good, interesting, strong female role models. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, though, yeah. I can I can look back on my childhood and you know, and, and say you know what a big inspiration fictional characters were to me: Optimus Prime and Batman and so forth. Uh, I can think of a lot of fictional characters that that really influenced me and uh and so obviously knowing how important that was to me i want to uh, make sure that that's really important for her and we're just uh you know we're very fortunate that we we live in an era where there's a lot to choose from more and more every day um and you know things like the wonder woman movie and captain marvel and all that so i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty happy about all that and it will uh, i imagine it will be a big hit at your house too so I am confused as all fucking get out about the status of Uncharted The Lost Legacy as DLC for Uncharted 4. I've been reading articles while you've been talking uh, to avoid listening to you, and I have discovered <laughs> that it is listed in several places as DLC for Uncharted 4, which obviously is, is what, uh, you know, what we both thought was the case originally, but it's DLC that's also being sold on disc. 
I, I'm seeing several people say. So uh, I, I guess, you know, they're, they're just doing sort of a, a unique kind of release with this. I guess there's maybe other examples of, of this, but as opposed to it being like a standalone title, uh, like Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon as an example, it seems like, or was that Far Cry 4 Blood Dragon? Anyway, Blood Dragon, as opposed to it being a standalone title. Three. I thought it was three. Then I guess perhaps this is standalone. I don't know if you need Uncharted 4 to make the Lost Legacy disc play. I, I, I'm i not sure. If anybody can explain this to us, uh, please write us at Brenton Lawrence Clueless Ponderings at dot org dot org <laughs> <laughs> horizon zero dawn the frozen wilds i have not played horizon zero dawn yet uh the only reason i haven't because i don't have my playstation 4 anymore i'm getting another playstation 4 by next year to play all these games that aren't coming out this year so i will catch up on horizon zero dawn at some point did you play it uh, i did I, I i rented it from uh from Redbox early on and had it for a day or two yeah and thought and kind of was like eh, it's interesting but Eh, but it was okay, and recently I checked it out from the library, and I've now had it for two weeks. I played it for about an hour or two, and it's just it's not doing it for me, so I, I, I couldn't care less about this DLC. I know Lance really got into it, and and I really want to get into it. I, I, Most people did. This is this is another The Last of Us for Lauren. I got you. Well, I, yeah. I uh, look forward to playing Horizon Zero Dawn, but I don't have a lot of... I didn't really pay a lot of attention to the DLC, since I don't really have any experience with the game. the game yeah right sure. days gone this is our second i guess our second e3 look at days gone because they didn't they show they showed some of this last year they did uh yep. we got again like i said about eight minutes of gameplay uh sam wetware headlining a game i'm all about sam wetware i think he's great uh he's a really nice guy too i had the opportunity to meet him uh at e3 uh i don't know years ago whenever he was promoting that second uh, force unleashed game and uh you know just Ruben and I chatted him up for 10 minutes or so. Super nice guy. Really down to earth and cool. So um, I am all about, and also he plays Darth Maul, uh, or he does the voice of Darth Maul in the uh, Star Wars animated shows, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this game looks pretty interesting. I I mean, it definitely, to me, feels like it's in the same vein as The Last of Us or something like that. It certainly is that, I mean, it's not an open world game, but it, it there's a lot of open space. There's room to improvise solutions to problems, to lay traps, to think about strategy and tactics and how you're going to get through a certain section, solve a certain problem. I like those qualities of it a lot. It is a zombie apocalypse game, but it feels a little bit closer to like 28 days later than to The Walking Dead. There, there's a more frantic kind of quality to it, and the the zombie horde is enormous. There's a lot of fucking zombies in this game, as we saw, I think, in that first uh, that first little gameplay demo they showed off. I'm interested in it. I'm not sold on it yet, but I am interested. Yeah, I'm pretty much in the same place, Brent. I'm interested, not sold. I I, I look forward to seeing more. I'm fatigued on zombiness. Um, you know, there are other games that that have done this uh, very very well, like The Last of Us, even though that wasn't my personal cup of tea. Mm. This sort of story, this cinematic e story looking thing. It just, I don't know. It, it's I'm a little fatigued on this. He doesn't seem like a particularly memorable character, uh, actor aside. Um, yeah, so yeah, we'll see. I, I think I need to see more of this to to really uh, to really heighten my interest in this. Now, uh, one thing that's more interesting to me, Brent, yes. is the next game. Yes, which comes from the which makers is not of one from of E3, my... by the way. Uh, which is weird. I can't. This is very weird to I me. I think that this was shown in a pre-show or maybe a post-show thing around Sony's press conference. Tony told me about it. Otherwise, I would have missed it. And I didn't know about it until you put it at, you put it on the, uh, our agenda. And no hint intended. <laughs> uh, and I was like, what the hell are you talking about? It's almost like it was it? hidden game, from us or something. The, the game I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, God. Why did I do it? Uh, that's my one, thing, that's my one for 2017. Jesus, Got it Daniel. out of my system. Uh, so Hidden Agenda comes from Supermassive Games, the makers of one of my favorite games in the last several years, uh, Until Dawn, which I just absolutely love yeah. and want to play again uh, as soon as possible. Um, and so it's a similar, not the same, mm-hmm. but similar type of game uh, that I, I encourage you guys to go look it up. It's kind of an said, interactive story comments. with, bran- with branching choices. That's exactly right, although the story in this case 
Um, so while Until Dawn was a, a B horror movie premise, yep. this, this is one, a B television show premise. This is a B television show premise. There's a serial killer um, who uh, sets traps. Say the, on, say the name. What's his name? What was his name? The Trapper. Oh, the Trapper. Because right, right, he his, sets traps. He, he sets traps you on get uh, it? on. He sets traps on his victims that are intended to kill the first responders. Yeah. And you play a couple of first responders. You play a, a cop, and I you, believe you play a detective. Uh, another f- and I think the other lead. It's two female oh. leads. One's I thought it was a detective and a beat cop. No, right? no. I, well, I think I think you're playing the detective in the case, and then I thought the other lady was like the district, like the assistant DA or something like that. But it, it doesn't matter. Mm, it, maybe both are so, involved in law enforcement to one degree or another. So up to this point, super interested in the game. Uh, you know, similar uh, to the butterfly effect and the branching storylines yes. and the gameplay that yes. kind of has the same feel. Yeah. There is a twist to this game that was not in uh, Until Dawn, which is that uh, Supermassive talks about in the trailer that you'll find if you Google this, uh, how they noticed that even though Until Dawn was a single-player game, people were posting and playing it online and other people were weighing in on their decisions. So um, they worked with Sony. I-, I believe it was developed for this game. I'm not actually 100% sure. Yeah. To create something called, is it Playlink yeah, Print, I think is what it's called? That's it. It's called Playlink. Which allows additional players to play using their smartphones and be involved in the game. And they show in the demo. Uh, and this isn't, this isn't um, well, actually, we don't. I was going to say this isn't sort of the kitschy thing that Ubisoft pitched with the, the second screen experience that never came to fruition. No. It seems that for this game, it has been designed and already built um, that allows other people to play uh, in the room and help make decisions and other things. So now, as an example, there's a moment in the trailer where you see Kat, who's one of the main characters, and she's she's got to make a choice. She can either save her partner who is in trouble, or she can save a hostage. And so you've got to vote. Save the partner, save the hostage. So there's four people in the room who are watching this. They've got their smartphones via play link. They're hooked up to the game. And so everybody votes. Save partner, save hostage. And so then the play proceeds depending on how the vote goes, but there's interesting things underneath that because they're talking about how players, the name of the game being hidden agenda. There is, there are, there are players who are going to be given instructions. They're going to be given information that the other players won't have through their phones. And so their votes may be as a result of having that secret information that other people don't have. And they talk about the ways that that's going to sort of create distrust and, and interesting little drama within the player group as they play through this adventure. But the other thing that I, I want to... So I think that's cool. I think that sounds like a really awesome party game kind of thing. Uh, but the thing that I think is so interesting is what you talked about when you played Until Dawn, Lauren, and the way that you and your wife played it together and you made the decisions together. And apparently, the people who made this game were spying on you via their NSA contacts. And they said, hey... We should just make a game that embraces that. We should just build that kind of, you know, everybody sitting on the couch playing the game together. We should build that functionality into the game. So basically what I'm saying is this is your fault. Well, so <laughs> here's the thing, though. Here's where this becomes an issue for me. All right. So, and they were spying on us, by the way. I don't know if you know or, or remember me talking about this, but the, but the PlayStation Eye camera is part of the game. That's right. They were spying uh, on you. It takes pictures on you. Yes. It wasn't just a um, funny joke. So here's one of the concerns for me is that, so first of all, just so everybody listening knows, uh, the game can be played in single player, right. although they, they play that down. Uh, also, I should say that currently it says it has a release date of 2017 is all it says. Yeah. Um, my concern is they show this game with four people sitting on the couch playing uh, together and voting on these decisions and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The way that we tend to play it is my wife and I. And so I'd be curious to know how the second screen experience plays out if you only have, say, one other person in the room yeah. um, versus four other people. Uh, and two, go, and two, um, is it built out such that, like, do the people, they didn't really say this explicitly, they only showed it this way, but do the people have to be in the room? Or could somebody log into one of my gaming sessions and be watching me stream it and be playing on their phone at home say, uh, where you live. I'd be surprised if you didn't all have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. I, I, no, I, I'm presuming that's the way it is, yeah. and that's the way they showed it. But what that means is, going back to this, is again, for me, it's me and one other person. And so what is my wife voting on a decision? Uh, how meaningful is that going to be? You know, I, who's she hiding her agenda from? Well, like, I, th- I, don't, I, don't, I think it's an excuse to invite a couple more people over. I, I think, don't like other people. I, I think Shelly and I drop by. 
the kids play oh, together. I would love that. And and we when we do this, yeah, you know, we just drop by to Massachusetts, fifteen hours away. Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. <laughs> but uh, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like if if there's not two other people uh, that you have to to you know come over and play this game with, then what's the point? There may be some validity to that. If you have a few friends that you can invite over to round out the group. I think it sounds very, very fun. Now, that being said, if it's halfway as good as, as Until Dawn was, I'll happily just play it in single player with my wife you know, sitting on the couch and right. experiencing the game with me. So what we're really talking about is it, we're not really talking about so much the validity or the potential quality of Hidden Agenda, but we're more sort of debating the potential quality of the PlayLink feature, I guess. Yeah, I just want a better understanding of how that works. All right, well, hopefully we'll get that in the coming days. But very excited. I had no idea that, that Supermassive was was uh, going to be announcing a title, and I loved Until Dawn, so I'm very excited about it. Right. This. Uh, something I am very excited about, and I didn't know anything about it until they showed it off at E3, is they are doing a full-on remake of Shadow of the Colossus. It's coming also in a nameless window of time in 2018. So 2019. Yeah, but... As opposed to, and I know everybody's saying, well, didn't they just do a fucking Shadow of the Colossus thing on PS3 or something? Yes, but that was only a remaster. That was the original game with, with bumped up graphics and stuff. I guess, because I, I, never, I never picked it up. Uh, but that's my understanding. This Shadow of the Colossus is a full-on remake, and it is gorgeous. And seeing that game again with all of the graphic quality that a modern title can deliver got me very... Very goosebumpy, and uh, and I'm very excited to play it. So this was something, Brent, and I, maybe you can clear this up for me. Yeah. I was very confused by this trailer because I so I didn't play the first game, but I've seen a lot of footage just because of the remake and all that, or the re, the remaster. Mm-hmm. I was watching this, and I kept going back and forth between like, is this a new game or not? And I, and it was clear that it wasn't a remaster. That was very clear to me. What I'm still unclear on is. Uh, did they just remake the original game, like totally from the ground up uh, with new new technology, or did they make a new Shadow of Colossus game? Um, because I was looking at the Colossi or whatever you call them, yeah. and they looked like the same Colossuses that were in the first yeah, game. Yeah, I mean this is this is a remake of the original Shadow of the Colossus. Right. Okay. So this isn't a new Colossus game no, that has. It's not. It's maybe not a like couple God of the originals, but they share a name and you know some. Right, this is an actual remake. They just took the new technology and engine and graphics and all that, and are rebuilding the first game shot for Correct. shot, essentially. Yeah, basically. Right. Basically. Okay, I got you. That's that's gotcha. what you're doing. Um, so speaking of God of War, Brent. Yes, it's funny the way that worked your way into the conversation. So, uh, God of War. God damn it! It's in 2018, and that does not make me. No, happy. I would. I would really love to be playing this game sooner rather than later. Because God damn, does it look good, Mother? I am. So intrigued by this game, and I just can't get past how much I love the father son um, premise of this, and how much how impactful that is. Yeah, it's it, it's it's interesting the way that certain media grows up along with you, and I, I I think about this quite a bit actually now as as I am a little bit older, and obviously I am a father now. It's really interesting the way that you you see things, and you're like, oh, there's a, there's a, this interesting parent child thing going on in this in this movie that I've watched a million times but I've never really thought about that relationship that kind of thing. So those sort of parent child relationship stories are very very interesting to me. And I I suppose that they're just relevant to me now whereas they didn't used to be relevant. Right. Yeah. Uh so that the idea that God of War as a video game franchise has kind of grown up along with me to the point that now God of War is exploring this parent child relationship. I'm all about. I am really, really anxious to play it. It doesn't hurt that the game is steeped in Norse mythology, which obviously is a great, great love of mine. And I mean, seeing, you know, like the fucking Midgard serpent, you know, come out of the lake there at the end and, and he says he, he wants to help. And my mind just starts spinning about, you <laughs> yes. know, so would this be Loki? You know, I mean, you know, cause the Midgard serpent is one of Loki's children. And so there's just like, you know, like all these questions about like, who are you facing off with? Is it, is it, you know, like Loki and, you know, somebody else? Is it, uh, is it, you know, like all the, as you know, like the, the Aesir, uh, 
you know, gods. I'm just, I'm dying to know. The other thing about that that I think is really interesting is that about that particular piece of the trailer is that his son seems to be able to communicate with the serpent where he can, yeah. uh, which I think is an interesting premise. And then of course they're like, so how, how is this serpent's help going to look in the game? Like, W- 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 what does that mean? Do we get to bring the serpent with us every like in a couple of maybe you know segments of this game? Maybe. Um, yeah, man, the game just fucking looks great. The combat looks fantastic. The the I am th- this was my my uh, most uh, I wouldn't say it was my most anticipated game, but uh, it is definitely my favorite game of the Sony presser and one of my favorite of the whole uh, show as it was last year. Even though I am not historically like a huge God of War player, yeah. this game just just is could not be more interesting to me, and I, I wish it would just come out. I agree with you. Speaking of El- something else that can go ahead and come out, Detroit, being human, the latest... Become human. S- excuse me. Detroit... Being human, a movie that was actually quite yeah, good. Right. <laughs> uh, Detroit, Become Human, the latest from David Cage and Quantic Dream. Similar, I suppose, to Hidden Agenda until dawn, and that the game is billing itself as a game of choices with a branching adventure that can go a lot of different directions and that you have control over all of that. Uh, I like the idea of that a lot. I'm very anxious to see how it's executed within the paradigm of a David Cage slash Quantic Dream game. You and I are fans, uh, many people are not. Um, I think that. I think that this style of game might be a very, very good fit for David Cage. And the subject matter, I, I think, is very, very intriguing. It's, it's not unlike some of the questions that, uh, that no doubt Roy Batty was asking himself as his four years were slowly ticking away. Yes, that, uh, I'm super intrigued by this. I can't wait to see it. I know that all of our listeners just love David Cage. Uh, and are chomping at the bit to get their hands on this one. Yep. Uh, you sorry sons of bitches. I know you guys don't care, but Brent and I like him. God damn it. We do. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm excited for it. I was excited to see it. Uh, I was hoping for a release date. They kind of teased that this could be, be the, the big reveal of the release date, and it wasn't, which bums me the hell out. Uh, so at this point, it's just more waiting. Yep. Um, And then... Came and then there was one Spider Man. So we got about eight minutes of gameplay from uh, this new uh, this new Spider Man game, Lauren. Spider Man. And Spider-Man. I don't know about you, but the thing that was running through my mind after just a minute or so of the gameplay was, oh my god, it's Spider Man Arkham City. Did you? Which is a good. Which thing. is a fucking good <laughs> right. thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in no way is is that a bad thing. I think that. Uh, I think that Insomniac infuse. I mean, the combat of the Arkham games is something we've always raved about, but seeing Spider-Man taking foes out on the sly with his unique skill set and his unique tool set was really, really cool. It's not something that I, I guess I was expecting to see in this game, but that ability to move through the environment as only Spider-Man can and take down foes as only Spider-Man can was really, really cool. I thought that the 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 one on group combat looked really interesting. I'm dying to know what it feels like to play. If it feels anywhere as close to as fluid or smooth as the Arkham games combat have traditionally been. And then of course there's the, you know, the big boss fight uh, that we see in the trailer against, I guess it's negative man. I- I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not really familiar with that, that villain as much as uh, some of his classic rogues gallery, but the boss fight was full of just really interesting, I guess, kind of quick time moments, uh, which may or may not be a good thing. I think those are perfectly fine, but you know, as long as they're not overused. Anyway, I came away from the show absolutely needing a change of pants after this. I was so excited. What did you think about uh, Insomniac's Spider-Man game? Uh, so first of all, it, so to me, it all comes down to the group combat because well, two things, the group combat and how much freedom you actually have in combat versus what they showed. And one of the things that I struggled with was, um, or, or struggled with, with discerning anyway. So, like, I don't know if you remember, Brent, there was a moment, which I thought was a wonderful moment, where he kicks a guy off of the skyscraper. Yeah, and then webs him and the so guy doesn't fall down. And then webs yeah, him back in, I right? And so, too. 
one of the things that I I like later was thinking about was like, was that part of the move, or do you have like an option? Could you let that guy fall off the skyscraper, right. for example? You have to hit a button um, to save him, and so forth. Right, and it was how hard was it? Like, so there were several examples throughout that where he like web slung and pulled a um pulled a like a, a beam down on a guy using the environment. So what I couldn't tell was was he using the environment? Is that something he noticed and was using the environment and it worked and it just worked so smoothly, or? You know, did they were they doing a finishing move, and the finishing move does that automatically, right? right? Which is two di- very different things. Yeah. Um, and so, how much of that is actually? So all of that was incredible to me. The use of the environment around him was incredible to me. I just couldn't tell if that was something he was actually controlling. And and, and really, that it, the game. So I love the tenor of the game. I love how Spider Man differs from the tenor of say a Batman in in sort of lighthearted, lighthearted nature of it. I lo- absolutely love that. I feel like they nailed what my sort of understanding of Peter Parker and Spider-Man would be. Um, but really, what, it, what really excited me about that game and what I think made Shadow of Mordor really, really good, although it had some really interesting ancillary things going on, was the Batman-like combat, yep. right? I mean, because at the end of the day, that shit is fun f- for 40 hours, regardless. Yes. <laughs> Even if it's... You know, we all agreed that Mordor wasn't quite as good as Batman. It was close, but it wasn't quite as good, and it was still super compelling uh, gameplay-wise. And it didn't so, hurt that the game um, had a lot of really compelling other mechanics to draw upon, which... No, 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 not at I all. I hope but, that this one will, too, given that it is an open-world game set in modern-day New York City, and to me, that calls to mind the Spider-Man 2 of yore, the, the game that was actually the tie-in to the second Spider-Man film. Uh, which was set in an open world, and it was incredible. The, the The ability to just web swing around that environment was so compelling. It was such and It looked fun. like it was in this game, and too. I, that's exactly what I was looking at in this game. I said, oh, my God, if they, if they have taken that aspect of just freedom of movement and the ability to web sling around the city in that huge sandbox, that was so evocative and so fun in and of itself. Like, you know, to the tune of 40 or 50 hours, despite really repetitive and kind of boring fighting. If they have taken that quality of that Spider-Man game, put it in this modern open world, this beautiful open world video game, and infused it with really compelling gameplay and story mechanics. Combat, yeah. Really compelling compelling combat and then other, Mm -hmm. you know, game mechanics and story and stuff. They they could have a serious home run on their hands. I, I'm really anxious to, I'm really anxious to hear some firsthand accounts of this game in action. Yeah. So what I would like to see at this point, I mean, that's clearly this was a gameplay demo, right? Um, but again, it was hard to discern at what points the game became linear. So there was a point, if you remember, Brent, when he goes inside of the office building, uh, and he spends a little bit of time in the office building. And he comes back yeah. out, and obviously he's web slinging around the city. And one of my one of my thoughts was, holy shit, is this like is this an open world where he could theoretically like go into an office building and they're procedurally building the interiors of these buildings? I'm dying to know, uh, which would be fucking insane. But I, it was hard to discern what was linear and what was open and what was what was controlled, like I was describing earlier, and what was sort of a scripted move that that Spidey does just because you say finishing move. And I would like to have a deeper understanding of that. And I think we're going to get that when we see people openly and freely doing gameplay as opposed to a scripted gameplay demo like right. this. Um, but it definitely looks like it has potential and I would be, I mean, it, it looks, it looks like an amazing Spider-Man game and certainly it's <laughs> an amazing pre- Spider-Man. Game. <laughs> Look what I did. Oh, and I didn't even know that's it. Spectacular. Isn't that great? Isn't that oh, great? Two for 2017 uh, way over the quota. <laughs> I am excited about Me this. Too. Hopefully it will be out in the next 22 months and we'll see. So basically my feeling was Sony has has given me a bunch of reasons between Uncharted Lost Legacy, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, maybe, uh, Days Gone, God of War, Spider-Man. Sony's given me a lot of reasons to invest in a PlayStation 4 sometime next year. Yeah, well, so I would like to bring up, Brent, I, I, that one thing that was glaringly obvious to me, and I think it's been true for a couple of years, which is why I currently own a PlayStation is that while well, Xbox was like, and it was driving me fucking crazy with the world premiere, world exclude, blah, 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 blah. It was, they, they, it was, they had game trailers-itis. Um, but um, Xbox like, was really promoting how 22 of the games were exclusives or whatever, but 
they weren't actually console no, exclusives. No, there's only a handful were, that are console exclusives. The others are time exclusive, exclusives. whatever. And 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 I, I I will say even just looking at these lists on my screen as we're talking about it that that Sony is just killing them on console exclusive with games like Uncharted and Horizon Zero Dawn and yeah. Shadow of the Colossus, God of War, Detroit Become Human. I mean, all of the games on this list, Spider Man, Spider Man's PS4 only, it right? Is. Yeah, so I mean, all, like almost every game on this list, except for maybe Hidden Agenda, is actually a Sony exclusive. Um, whereas almost none of the ones on Xbox are actually exclusives. Uh, and Sony is, I mean, just kill. And exclusives are one of the main things that might drive one to a specific console or ecosystem, right? Yep. So um, Sony just killed it. Um, In my opinion, well, you said Hidden Agenda, but I mean, Hidden Agenda is it's a. Uh... Oh, is that also an exclusive? Yeah, it, it's a PlayStation Four only title. Oh, I mean, su- super, you're right. Super so Massive every... is. I don't. I don't know if they're wholly owned by Sony, but I mean, Super Massive is basically a Sony developer. So, so you're right. So every game, completely by accident, Brent. Every single game that's on our Sony list is a PlayStation exclusive. Right. And of the games on our Xbox list, like one, two, State of Decay and Sea of Thieves. I think two are exclusive to. Windows, right to the ecosystem. Yeah. Not even not the console, but the ecosystem, right? But I think that's really interesting and telling. And I think Microsoft is is taking a bath there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I definitely on that point. I mean, how how badly it's affecting them, I don't know. But certainly on that particular point, uh, Sony definitely seems to to have the advantage right now. I have to say that for my own part, I, I am delighted that. Things have gone, I guess, the way that they have because, you know, prior there were some games that came out on the Xbox that never saw a release on PC, and those were the few titles that that really kind of bugged me as far as like, oh, I wish it come out on PC because I don't really want to invest in an Xbox, but I would like to play it. And so I, I guess in that regard, it's it's worked out okay that Microsoft is beginning to treat this more as like the ecosystem of Xbox and Windows. Well, like 10. I said, I'm. I'm very happy about it. I can have a PlayStation and a PC, and I'm covered. I, I, I agree. I, I like I like those two things. I really, really like that combination, having a PC and a PlayStation 4. I, I think I am as happy as I could be as a gamer with those two with those two boxes. I would agree. So, Brent, just out of curiosity, do you have, if you had to pick a, a game of the show, a single game that stood out to you more than any, or one or two games, what what? Is there something that stands out to well, you? Well, let me just pick three, just so I can, you know, kind of do some different things. I would say from from just out of sheer left field, I never imagined that this game would ever get made or that I would enjoy it. It's Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I, I absolutely love that, and um, got so excited when I saw it. Uh, I had a similar kind of oh my god reaction to Spider Man, actually seeing what the game is going to look like and control like was a really really fun moment for me and then if i'm going to pick uh, one other just uh, for the sake of sheer excitement it would probably be south park phone destroyer the idea of a mobile customizable card game in the vein of the south park video game it was just a huge huge laugh out loud moment for me i was so excited about that so if i'm just going to pick three for some reason it'll be those three what about you uh fair enough i think you know uh so if i had to pick three which is a number i'm using just because you did um i would say uh probably my number one uh game is wolfenstein it's interesting because all none of the three are going to match your three which i think is interesting um uh, wolfenstein two it would be my number one i mean that that i just saw that and it was it was i'm trying to think it was one of the few trailers um, that I walked away from like, holy shit, that was awesome. And it was the only one that I felt that to the degree that I did with that game. Right. Um, th- there was another trailer that sort of made me feel that, which is a total surprise to me, which is Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yeah. But, and it's not one of the games I'm picking. I just thought it was a really cool trailer. True. Um, and very well put together. It was an entirely CG trailer. But so, um, so Wolfenstein 2... Um, uh, the other, if I was to, if I was going to pick two other games, I would likely pick um, God of War. I'm very, very, very excited for God of War, and I, uh, I really, really liked the trailer. Um, that would be the other one that I pick, and then um, I, the Shadow of War trailer. 
um it, it was just i mean it was just fantastic that character was awesome the writing was awesome i start watching the shadow of war and i look at it and i think yeah i'm interested in the game but i wh- whatever i mean i'll probably get it when it comes out and that's fine and then i and then i watch the trailer this happens every time in the last yeah. year and i and i by the time i'm five minutes into it i'm like this is fucking hand great. me and, the and paper towels that the, the, the character in that game was just so well um, realized and well written and funny. I was literally laughing at a trailer. Yeah. Um, th- those would be the three that I would probably pick out um, if I had to, to to pick three games. Well, so, I could. Uh, I mean, I could sit here and pick another three games for another three reasons and be completely happy because the, the although I think overall the show was mediocre for the reasons that we listed at the top. The point is that the, the the things that I got excited about, I did get really excited about. So, uh, lot to be ha- that's lot true. to be happy about in that respect, I guess. There is one other that I do want to mention, and that is Anthem. I am very excited to see. I thought that was a very cool trailer, despite the fucking idiotic <laughs> division like dialogue. Yes, despite the scripted uh, the, dialogue, the game looks absolutely gorgeous and has a ton of potential. I just I really want to see more of that game, and that one was. Not one that I was expecting. And what about you guys? If you guys were going to pick three games to represent what got you excited at E3 this year, what would your three picks be? Let us know in the comments. We always love hearing from you guys, and we're glad as hell to be back with you guys for this show. We appreciate everybody who supports the site, supports the show, and uh, gives us love by sharing your thoughts, sharing news stories, and comments and discussion on the Outlaw Gamer website. And as Lauren mentioned at the top of the show, the Outlaw Gamer Discord server. Uh, We'll see you guys in there, in the thick and fray of it, as we get a little bit further into the year and begin to find out if some of these games we saw at E3 actually measure up once they're on the shelves. And I guess, Lauren, I'm going to hand it back to you to say goodbye. It was great being back with you, buddy. A lot of fun. Absolutely, man. It's always great to be with you. You know I love being here. We love doing this for you guys. We're going to try and keep bringing you shows when we're able to throughout the year. Uh, we love talking about gaming. We're grateful for your support and for your conversation on the website and as your friendship. And I do feel compelled to just encourage people to keep going to the website and keep playing games because you don't stop playing when you get old. You get old because you stop playing. Right on. <laughs>